Hello, my name is Angelica Galante. I'm a doctoral candidate at OISE, University of Toronto, and also an instructor here at Brock University. And I'm Ron Thompson, a professor of applied linguistics at Brock University. We'd like to thank Hugh Jarvis from TISO Academic for inviting us to talk about our article that was recently published at TISO Quarterly, The Effectiveness of Drama as an Instructional Approach for the Development of Second Language Oral Fluency, Comprehensibility, and Accentedness. Just to provide you with a bit of background, it's quite widely accepted now that in order for L2 learners to improve in their oral fluency, not just in terms of other dimensions of language learning, that explicit instruction is really quite essential. Many people used to believe, and perhaps still do, that being immersed in an environment where English is spoken all the time, for example, in an ESL context like Canada or the United States, was enough to improve fluency. However, just having more opportunities to practice oral English does not seem to improve fluency significantly. In addition, research shows that having a foreign accent or a strong foreign accent does not necessarily impact comprehensibility in a negative way. And if you uh, look at this literature in more detail, often a distinction is made between not only comprehensibility and accent, but also between comprehensibility, accent, and intelligibility. For the purposes of our research, we're not as interested in intelligibility, which refers to the extent to which a message is actually understood by a listener, uh, but we're looking at comprehensibility, which refers to how much effort a listener puts into understanding that message, which we think is a slightly higher standard than simply understanding the message itself. Mm -hmm. So you can still have a foreign accent and be very well understood. Now in our study, we compared two types of instruction that had a focus on oral communication. In one, we followed a drama approach and we term or call this the drama group. And in the other, we followed a typical communicative language teaching approach. So we wanted to know if the EFL learners in the drama group would improve aspects of pronunciation, such as fluency, comprehensibility, and accentedness compared to the students in the non-drama group. The study took place in Sao Paulo, Brazil, and had four different EFL classes. Two of them followed a drama instruction approach, and two followed a communicative language teaching approach. So both groups actually had focus on oral communication, but the drama program had more explicit instruction on aspects of pronunciation, such as intonation, articulation, voice projection, and others. And we obtained speech samples from each learner before and after they participated in this program of instruction. We then randomized these speech recordings and recruited 30 Canadian listeners to assess them. And these listeners listened to the speech samples and provided ratings on how fluent, how comprehensible, and how accented the learner's speech sounded. The results of our study are quite important as they show that there was a significant improvement in fluency and comprehensibility among the learners in the drama group compared to the learners who were in the non-drama group just following a communicative language teaching approach. We also found that even if the EFL learner's speech had a strong foreign accent, it was still considered very comprehensible and fluent. Once again, this shows that foreign accent does not necessarily contribute to speech being comprehensible. These results confirm that oral tasks that are communicative in nature might not be enough for improving fluency or comprehensibility. So what we learned from this study is that borrowing techniques uh, taken from drama, EFL and ESL teachers can implement strategies that help learners become more fluent. Some of the drama tasks that we used in our study included creative role plays, improvisation, and even scripted role plays from the textbook. But instead of simply reading and memorizing, students were asked to focus on aspects of the delivery. So for example, teacher, teachers can ask students to focus on the intent of a message, on word stress in sentences, on rhythm, voice projection, articulation, and so on. One thing that is important is that students receive feedback. So for example, in class, this would mean that students would deliver a short presentation in front of the class, receive feedback from the teacher and the students, 
and perform it again so that they can, they can improve based on the feedback that they have received. The learners in our study perform tasks on a weekly basis, the drama task that is, and they also presented a short play at the end of the term as one of the outcomes of the uh, training. The tasks in class were more creative and less memorized, and the play presentation was rehearsed uh, multiple times, actually. That doesn't mean that students had to memorize every single line in the play, but they were asked to focus on the intent of the message. So if they wanted to improvise some of the lines, that would be fine, as long as the intent of the message was clear. We think that the results of our study are important because they demonstrate that fluency can be instructed, oral fluency that is. We also think that it's important in particular to the EFL context where access to practice speaking opportunities are limited outside of the classroom. We believe that including uh, drama tasks in the EFL classroom and the ESL classroom as well can be beneficial for learners to improve both fluency and comprehensibility levels. So finally, if you'd like to know more about our study, we invite you to read the article in PSOL Quarterly. And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.